Well, good morning. Breakfast with the broker every Tuesday morning. You know, when we're looking through August and people are uh, in South Florida, they uh, they cringe a little bit. You know, it's like uh, there's a couple of things, you know, that's not just summer and back to school and all that, because welcome all the kids to back to school for August 10th. Um, it is the first day of school in Palm Beach County. But also, you know what it is? It's hurricane season. So that's a little hint of my next guest. Without further ado, and now, by way of West Palm Beach, Florida, he is a meteorologist at WPTV. He is a graduate of Florida State University. He has reported on Hurricane Floyd, Hurricane Dennis, and Hurricane Charlie, to name a few. He's a member of Surf Rider Foundation and has the first surf blog by a meteorologist. They call him the surfing weatherman. He is James Wheeland. Ha! <laughs> I feel like he should be on a WWE or something. <laughs> you know, I, I, I figured he was good, but I'm on crutches here, as you can see. I had oh, foot happened? surgery. I had foot surgery, so oh. looks like I'm out of the water till November. But hey, November's when the waves come back, so <laughs> should be well, just in time. Listen, uh, yeah, it's a little, it's a little flat out there. I mean, I, you know, I'm a little too big for a surfboard. Um, I, I don't even think they have the. Do they have the long wide board or just the long board? <laughs> uh, they have them in every size for every size. <laughs> Nobody's ever too big. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's awesome, though. You know, you know, we're talking about hurricane season, and obviously, uh, I'm sure you get these questions all the time. You know, first of all, let's. Talk about how you became a meteorologist. Like, what what made you or what propelled you into that career? Well, the motivation was actually surfing, if you can believe it, because I started surfing when I was in high school. I went to Coconut Creek High School down in Broward County in northern Broward. And um, my buddy got me into surfing because we had a, a competition, the air band. I don't know if your high school had that, where you fake play and you give a performance yep. for the entire school and all that. So, uh, I got a group of guys together and we did like the Beach Boys because when I was in high school, I loved the golden oldies. I loved the oldies and 60s music and I loved the Beach Boys. So my uh, thought was, well, we need to put on like choreograph around the stage and I need some surfboards. So I asked a friend for some surfboards. And then after that was over, we came in second, by the way. So that's not bad. <laughs> But uh, after that, he's like, hey, you want to go surfing with me once and try it out? And I was like, sure. And like the first day, I think I paddled out. I think it was in Boca. It was at Spanish River. And I paddled out of Boca. And it was very small. I think it was in the summer. So the waves were like a foot or two or something like that. But just being in the clear water of Palm Beach County and just warm. And I was like, I am hooked. So just, just like that, I'm like, I need to do this more. So then as I started surfing more, I started trying to say, well, when can I surf again? And when is there going to be waves? What makes the waves? Well, the weather makes the waves. So I started thinking, well, what kind of weather patterns make the waves? And I started looking things up. This is all pre-internet. So yes, I had to go to the library and look things up and figure out like what type of weather patterns would make waves just because, just so I can know when I can go surfing again. And then that eventually evolved as I went, as I graduated high school, I ended up going to community college, to Broward Community College, and I was going to be a science or math teacher. And then I'm like, you know, this weather thing is super interesting to me. So I looked up programs on, you know, how to become a meteorologist and Florida State was one of the top schools. So I applied to Florida State. I got accepted. And now it's all history. I graduated from Florida State and got my meteorology degree there. And kind of bounced around for a little bit before I came home here to South Florida. My family's down here too. So excited yeah, to be back I mean, down here surfing. <laughs> that, that, that's awesome. And, and, you know, I mean, uh, you went to Florida State University and obviously, um, you know, the, the, the legend um, unfortunately passed away. I mean, uh, there's not a bigger yeah. legend in sports, um, you know, rest in peace, Bobby Bowden, because uh, uh, I, I, I grew up a University of Miami fan um, and I went to University of Alabama. So, you know, I we kind of hated to have Florida State, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it certainly respected the coach. And, 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 you know, there's not many coaches where, 
you know, you you look around and you hear from the former players, and 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 there are no controversies, no uh, the guy is just you know everyone uh, you know has a, an amazing word for him, and um, you know rest in peace, and you know certainly. Yeah, for sure. And I was very fortunate to be there during the peak of that time. I mean, the, my first year there, we won the national championship, and pretty much every year that I attended, we either won or came in very close. So uh, I was super fortunate to be there when uh, the Seminoles were at their peak, you know, and uh, yeah, definitely rest in peace. He's a great guy. Pretty awesome. So uh, hurricane season, huh? Um, <laughs> we're in it. We are in it now. You know, yeah, we took a rest yeah. for about, for, for not about a month, we took a rest for one month. Right. You know, Elsa was one month ago that the last advisory was issued. And uh, now we have this uh, new one, possibly Fred. I don't think it's Fred yet, but it's getting there. So, um, you know, when, you know, you look at meteorologists and you look at the, you know, the, you know, the reports on tropical updates and all this, you know, and, and, and you know, all the Euro models and uh, the spaghetti models and, you know, and you see all the memes and all that stuff. Like, <laughs> like how, I mean, you know, you know, people don't realize like it's, it's, pretty tough to predict mother nature <laughs> yeah we're predicting the future so right. right so um how's how's this uh hurricane season going and um uh i know there's one or two uh systems out there that i saw yeah so far it's been above average because we fired off five name storms right away early on in the season which doesn't normally happen they were pretty weak systems for the most part elsa did briefly become a hurricane but uh still everything that was not the strongest of storms so uh we did have a bunch out there some were short-lived we're kind of catching up now because we haven't had anything for a month so we're almost back to near average but it does look like we are now going to go in into a more active phase here for at least a, a couple of weeks if not longer um there are some things that we look at for like long range one of them is called the MJO, and pretty much it was in an unfavorable phase for a month, and that that it pretty much rang true because we didn't have anything going on. And it's pretty much tracking the either rising or sinking air in the tropics around the globe. So when we see the rising come over into our neck of the woods, then it kind of gives it that extra little push to get going, and we start to see a flare-up of activity. And I think that's what we're beginning to see right now, and it, it – least a two week uh, period of that, if not longer. So, I mean, you know, I know that, you know, hurricane season technically is what starts in June 1st or yes. Right. And, and ends November 30th, but typically most of the hurricanes are August, September, October, you know I mean? And even when you get into October, it's less likely. So it's really more August, September, maybe the beginning of October. Um, the the question I always had is like why do the systems start in Africa, you know, and then like you know as things come in and it goes into maybe fall a little bit, um, they start the systems start forming, you know, or, or coming into the Caribbean and you know more of the Gulf. What what causes that? Well, that's a great question. So in the beginning in the end of season and the beginning of the season it's kind of similar we get most of the storms that form on the tail ends of cold fronts some of the cold fronts stall they sit out there for a little bit sure they're not warm core systems but if they sit out there long enough they start to convert into a warm core system and then we'll see especially the tail end of fronts some little pieces left over and we can see some uh spins start to spin out there and then we can get some tropical systems uh, from that. And that's the beginning and the end of the season is the same. Although the end of the seasons, we still have uh, kind of those tropical waves that are still lingering around. So some of those, it's not going to be favorable anymore in the main development region of the Atlantic, which is way out towards Africa and then all the way to the islands. It's more favorable close to home into the Gulf of Mexico, Northwestern Caribbean or the Bahamas. So by the time they get in there, then they may spin up into something uh, near us. And basically the meat and potatoes of the season, like you just said, August, September, October, that is the meat and potatoes of the season. Some seasons we won't even get anything in June or July. Some seasons we get some in May, but it just uh, kind of depends on what the pattern is at the time. But 
uh, when these uh, African, it's really the African monsoon season, when that kicks in the gear and we start to see these tropical waves move off the coast of Africa, well, that's when we see those potential for these things to develop because they're moving over very warm waters. By the time we get to August, September, and even October, like the deep tropics are just boiling warm, right? So we have by far warm enough water and the warm water is the fuel, right? You need the evaporation off the warm water. You need all that uh, water vapor in there too. And that in turn will help fuel these storms. So as long as you have plenty of that fuel and then you throw in a little spark, these African waves, things can start to, to spin up there. So we'll see those as they trek across and pretty much why one develops and one doesn't, it just depends on, what their environmental conditions are around them. We have a lot of that uh, Saharan dust that gets kicked up by the same monsoon type winds and uh, uh, waves that move over Africa. They're gonna, they're gonna push a lot of that uh, dust up into the atmosphere and that will move all the way across the Atlantic. We got dry air at times that comes on in and that can mix into it and that's a detriment. We got upper level winds, which could knock it down. It kind of like, the hurricane wants to be straight up like this. And when there's shear, you know, we talk about shear, shear is going to tilt it. It's going to push it over and it doesn't want to get pushed over. If it's pushed over, it's not going to strengthen into a really strong storm. So uh, if you have that shear, which we don't have a lot of this year in the Caribbean because it's not an El Nino year. An El Nino year, basically the result of the El Nino is that we have strong shear over much of the Caribbean, even parts of the Atlantic. So therefore, there's less storms that get a chance to spin up, especially in that main development region. And then they just gradually, surely, slowly but surely turn into a tropical depression and tropical storm and a hurricane. And then if all conditions are absolutely perfect, if you get a major hurricane and you get a few of those every year. So what makes an El Nino year? You know, people, you know, well, people that are relocating to South Florida, right? Most of them probably have never heard of El Nino, um, you know, and and when you look at from it, California, well, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely. Right. And, you know, so when you're looking at it and, and people relocate and they get, you know, they get scared of two things in Florida, you know, hurricanes and bugs, you know, so uh, <laughs> especially yeah. from the northeast. Right. So, you know, they, they look at it and go, well, you know, you see all these hurricanes and it's, you know, it's this you know, everyone's in a panic. They're all at the gas stations and all this other different things. And, you know, and you wonder, you know, what, what, a, you know, how many times is a hurricane? And I guess that's probably part of the, part of an issue, but how many times is a hurricane going to be announced and then not hit? And then it, people start to become complacent and that's when they hit. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Like you can just count on all the time. You're going to have to prepare like all the time. Like you can't take it as, oh, this one didn't, you know, the boy who cried wolf or whatever. You, you can't really think of it that way. You have to think of it as, I always tell people, think of it as, and you'll get this good, to, think of it as homeowner's insurance or car insurance, right? You're buying right. that and are you upset that you're not using your insurance every single month, even though you're paying for it? You're not, that. you're super happy that you didn't have to use it, right? So uh, with preparing for hurricanes, it's the same deal. You, you've got to prepare every time. I know it's a pain in the butt and I know people get crazy, but you prepare for it. And then when it doesn't hit, you have to be happy about it, that at least you don't have to put up with any of the destruction because when does, when one does come through, it's a whole different ball game. It's not over when the storm is over. Anybody who's been through a hurricane <laughs> knows that like, that's just the beginning. Once the storm is over, it's a pain in the butt to go through the cleanup and all that stuff. I mean, when Irma went through here, it didn't even hit us. And oh my gosh, the cleanup from that was just ridiculous. And that lasted to like November. Imagine if, you know, there was actual houses that fell apart and stuff. I mean, it would take forever. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember Hurricane Andrew, you know, um, and uh, luckily I was in, in Boca Raton and uh, I grew up here and, you know, we went down there to help clean up and, and it was like a third world country, like the tent cities. And, you know, it was just, just absolutely destruction everywhere. Yeah. And so, you know, you, you look at it and even look at Wilma, you know, knocked us out of power for, you know, almost two weeks in, in some areas. 
you know, and really it's not even just the, during the hurricane. I mean, that, that's, you know, that can be scary, but the after effects are so much worse, you know? So, um, but if yeah, you're prepared, sure. like you said, you know, and, and you have your, you know, your lights, you, you know, your lanterns, your, your, your bottle of water, your, you know, your canned foods and, and stuff like that, you know, and, you know, um, you know, maybe a generator or even a small generator or something like that. It would be certainly more comfortable and, and better for you. Um, so you're not running around panicking the last day before a hurricane's going to hit. Yeah, exactly. And know what's good for you. Like your specific hurricane plan is going to be different than maybe your neighbors or even other people's because maybe you have kids, maybe you don't, don't maybe you have pets, maybe you don't. So everybody's going to be a little bit different. You know, medications, you have to worry about that because, well, I mean, what if we can't go to the store or what if the stores are all closed? Um, one thing I think with this pandemic, too, it's kind of been an, a year long kind of <laughs> preparation. I remember we were out of toilet paper. We yeah. all, we've pretty much been out of everything. <laughs> so, so now we know, like, <laughs> you know, you don't know, but you know, at least in a hurricane, what you really need. And with the advancements of technology and forecasting and all that, like it's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing because with more notice means more panic buying, you know, like um, what was the one like Dorian or even uh, Matthew a few years ago. I mean, we knew it was going to be close and people were buying gas like a week, eight, nine days out. And gas stations were going empty and lines at the gas station were crazy. And it's like, I don't know who drives like a week and can't fill up again. Like most of us have to fill up gas again after a week. So you're really, I mean, what are you doing by, by creating, you know, the panic a week ahead of time? It's, it's not really the best thing, but then, I mean, what's the answer then? I don't, I don't really know, you know, <laughs> it's, well, we just you know, have to crazy. deal with it. That's all. Uh, for other supplies, you're good to go because you can right. buy water and all that stuff. I do it. Get it out of the way first because I don't want to go to the store during the craziness, you know? You know, so, I mean, and that's a good point. I mean, when you're looking at technology and, and you're forecasting seven, eight days out, I mean, the likelihood that the f storm is going to be on that same exact, you know, consistent model is like, not good. I mean, if you do it in two days, you know, two days out, you know, it's probably a, you know, a lot more accurate. Right. Um, so people look at those seven, eight days and they start, you know, depending on their level of anxiety, um, you know, they start uh, getting fearful, but really it's, I mean, the preparedness is really starts, should start in May, you know, where you start to, you know, you know, gather some products, either batteries or, you know, potentially generator. So you don't have to deal with this panic stuff. I mean, obviously, you know, as you talked about gas and stuff, you know, we, um, you know, that, that is obviously a, a, kind of more of a, as needed, but you know, if, if you needed plywood or, 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 you know, a, as you said, more of a customized, um, hurricane preparedness, uh, plan, you know, you should be doing that in May and starting in, you know, maybe beginning of June rather than waiting until, August, September, October, when everyone's doing it. Yeah, for sure. And it's going to be much easier on you. And you're not going to have to deal with the, the crowds and the craziness of people fighting over a piece of plywood or screws or, or whatever. Um, you know, hopefully I don't have much experience with plywood on the windows. I mean, I have shutters, but like, I don't know what people do with them after the fact that every year, you know, there's a run on, on the plywood. I guess they just throw them out or don't want to keep them because it, it does take up a lot of space. I mean, the shutters take up a lot of space really too. Um, but, uh, you know, just be prepared way ahead of time is, is the best way to go. Yeah. I mean, um, I have hurricane windows, but I still have my plywood from when I didn't have them. And yeah, I kept my <laughs> and I'm sitting there, like, what do you do with it? Like, that's probably a good question. <laughs> if, I, if anyone uh, knows yeah, I have metal ones and I kept them even though I got hurricane windows. Right. Just because I feel like, I mean, you got them, you know, it's, it's they don't not break, right? Right. Uh, an impact window is going to break. It's going to shatter. You're going to have a broken window. It's not going to come in the house, no, but it's going to break. So, and my thinking is, 
or would you rather like in a cat five or even a cat four is pretty dangerous. I would rather still shut her up even with impact windows because down the road, like after the hurricane, you're going to have to deal with an insurance company to come fix all your windows if they break. So yeah. you could be like the one guy on the block that's like, yeah, I don't have any damage or whatever. And you don't have to, you know, as you know, it, it's kind of a pain in the butt, the process to get insurance out there and to pay for it and for them to, you know, do all their thing. I mean, there's still tarps on roofs in some areas waiting for, you know, insurance to approve it. So I would much rather not have to deal with that. But <laughs> for anything other or grazed by, I'm not putting them up. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get Regardless it. of what my wife says. <laughs> no, you know, a four or five, I'm out of here. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a hurricane four or five, I'm out. You know, um, I'll, I'll see you somewhere in, uh, in Oklahoma. Um, although, you know, you get tornadoes, no so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> at least you get warnings with hurricanes. Um, yeah. you know, it, it's interesting. So in preparation of this uh, interview, I obviously had to watch Outer Banks. Um, so we're, <laughs> we're on the second season. Oh, so, yeah, um, good. I didn't watch it. It's, it, you know, what? it's, it's excellent. You know, really? um, okay. I'll it's excellent. It. It's really, really good. It's interesting. So I even put you, um, right in my, uh, little, uh, um, <laughs> Surfing, you, know, like you and your suit and everything. Up. Yeah, it looks good. So suit tell us a little bit about suit for the TV. I mean, I think it's awesome what you're doing with your um the first surf uh, blog by a meteorologist. I think that's really, really cool. Where can we find that? So that's at WPTV.com slash surfing, and it'll direct you right there. Uh okay. I think I do need to up it right now updated now because uh, we got new information coming in with that potential tropical cyclone there and uh so uh but i normally update it when there's some potential for waves um for us so when um yeah i mean i think that's great because i i you know i know a lot of uh my clients who um surf and you know and and they um they're constantly looking for information and there's other surf blogs and ways to do it but to have a meteorologist who um who, who's been studying this for for years and you know really an expert on it um to have them you know know how to you know love surfing and to be able to put that out there you know whether the waves you know you know what they're breaking at and all that kind of stuff is pretty cool yeah thanks i appreciate that yeah and i think it's just being local too is a big deal you know they see me out in the water they know like you know, people have said too, uh, if we see you out there, we must be in the right spot. Although that's not always the case because sometimes you got to work and you got to pick whatever you yeah. closest, but still, you know, they, they feel like, Hey, they, we see this guy out there. We know he's surfing with us and we know he's paying attention and, you know, definitely having all that local knowledge, uh, you know, supersedes anything like Surfline or any of the other uh, sites that are out there to have this kind of local knowledge, looking at all of those models, and then deciphering, well, how, those conditions, what's it going to look like at our breaks right here? I know what all of our breaks do in those conditions. So then I can give that that information in my blog. That's that's awesome. I mean, because people say, you know, like, why would you come to Florida to go surfing, right? Because, you know, typically you don't have, you know, the biggest of waves. You know, you're not going to get a Hawaiian uh, yeah. you know, 20 foot waves. but <laughs> It gets but, big um, sometimes, though. But you yeah. got to be super fit to be out there and get pounded for a little bit just to catch one wave sometimes. <laughs> That's very cool, though. Listen, I, I want to thank you for all that you do and and, and continue to watch uh, WPTV, um, James Wheland on uh, on the meteorologist, um, you know, updates. And obviously, um, you know, what's out there now is a uh, tropical storm. Is it tropical storm yet? Not quite there yet. It's a potential tropical cyclone. So, I know that thing we hate when they do this, but it does have its use uh, because it just confuses everybody. The reason they do a potential is because they need to issue uh, warnings and watches for a landmass somewhere, island, the coast, whatever. They need to, uh, the hurricane center needs to issue those uh, watches and warnings. They can't just issue it without a storm, right? Like you can't, like that's not the process that they go through. Right. So in order to get, over that, they're like, well, how about we start advisories on a storm that hasn't even started yet? And once we do that, then we can issue all the products that we want. 
if it's approaching land within two days, you know, a, a watch or a warning, a watch is the farther out in time. A warning is the closer in on time. So that's why they decided to do that. And then the second problem is the word cyclone, right? Like that confuses people. Their thinking was, you know, well, what's a generic, what's as, about as generic as you can get? Cause we can't say a potential tropical depression because sometimes it just turns into a tropical storm and kind of skips over the depression uh, phase if it's very strong. You can't say potential tropical storm because maybe it's a depression. So, or maybe it doesn't even become a storm. You know what I mean? Like you can't really say that. So they came up with cyclone, which is technically the generic term for just a low pressure system. Uh, it's interesting because so, I thought a cyclone just, just spun differently than a hurricane. Like that was my, you know, like. They do name hurricanes. They're right. Australia cyclones. So okay. In Indian Ocean. So you have that, you know, that's what they named them down there because that was tradition for them. Cyclone is, again, a low pressure system. They do spin in the opposite direction. But in general, like a cyclone would be just low pressure. An anti-cyclone would be high pressure. Got it. I we've we've had like since then we've had like Q and A's with the Hurricane Center and everybody everybody complains about it, but they're pretty uh, set in their way of let's just try this out. But in the beginning, I was like, well, why can't you just say potential tropical system? Like I don't right right that's just, that's what system is about as generic as you get you can get. And he's like, well, but it's already a system, isn't it? Because it's a <laughs> wave. I'm like, uh, so <laughs> you know, you got people that are maybe way too technical and then trying to do socially what people will understand the most. And sometimes it, it I don't know. Yeah. I don't it, like it. Nobody likes it. So no, cause it, 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 it does confuse, to live with, I guess. Yeah. It, confuses. it definitely confuses people, but, uh, that's, uh, interesting. So, uh, thank you very much. I always end the, uh, program on, uh, Two questions. One is, um, hopefully you do watch. I don't know if you do, but a uh, streaming series. Um, what's your favorite streaming series of all time, and what are you currently watching? Um, currently I'm actually watching Game of Thrones. Uh, yeah, I didn't get, <laughs> I wasn't in on it ten years ago, so I'm on the last season. Don't ruin it for me. It, it, it's uh, pretty. It's pretty crazy, actually. Th that that you know what I, uh, I know the point that um Game of Thrones got me was the uh the red wedding episode oh and yeah like, and that's oh like my. midway through <laughs> yeah and i'm like um and then i was hooked <laughs> the beginning was super confusing i almost yep. didn't continue to watch because there's so many characters there's so many things going on and you can't i could i'm bad at like getting to know characters right away so and you know how it is i mean we didn't see those white we saw them in the beginning the white walkers then we didn't see them the rest of the season right so like what <laughs> well, I thought this was the focus of the show, and then you know they're gone. Right, it's and maybe funny. best of all time. I mean, geez, I don't know. I did like Breaking Bad. That was pretty cool. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And well, I can't wait for Better Call Saul to come back out. That should be coming out soon. Yeah, it's while. coming up. Last right? season. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> Well, listen, I want to um, thank you very much for coming on and, and sharing some insight into, you know, weather systems, um, hurricane preparedness, and, and of course, surfing. So um, definitely look up uh, James Wheeland. Um, you can catch him on WPTV. You could also catch him on uh, WPTV backslash surfing uh, for his surfing blog and uh, understand where the, where the waves are and uh, when it's a good time to go surfing. And the good time to surf is not – you know, the morning of a hurricane coming. So <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Winter is our season. Winter <laughs> exactly. is usually the, the good season. It doesn't get too cold here, cold here. So and, uh, and selfishly, I'm hoping that you're not too busy in the next couple months, but uh, uh, you too. probably will be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. Oh, don't forget to follow me on social media too. I have Surf and Weatherman on Twitter, on uh, Instagram. It's a big one I really focus on and then Facebook too. So follow me on those. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Uh, and uh, if you ever need anything, let us know. Breakfast with the broker every Tuesday morning. Thanks. So All right. Much. Thanks, David. Take care, James.